There we go. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to um, well, as I said, uh, it's going to be a shipbuilding live stream or well, a ship theory crafting live stream, I guess, where we're going to be uh, talking about ship builds in general. I've already had a lot of uh, requests from you guys, and I can already now say that I'm not going to be able to run through all of them. Um, but I picked out a few that we're going to start with, and so very casual today we're not actually going to go in game we're just going to be playing around the call yolos talk about ship builds talk about the things that i go through whenever i do a new build what i think about and uh, and those kind of things uh so who do we have here today we have david we have stevie i think over on twitch and on youtube we also have a whole host of guys shirok duniku Dunik. I guess, Lukey, Nilsson, MacDoodle. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. I hope you're doing wonderfully. So, oh yeah, we need to get something important out of the way first, of course. The mock reveal of today. Unfortunately, with the new, um, the new 50,000 subscriber special limited edition mock has not arrived yet. It's shipping right now. I'm still waiting for it. So I've gone with the standard down to the astronomy mug today that you can find in the merch store. Um, of course, right now I'm running some, um, I'm running all the celebration events. They're currently uh, currently going on. I've finished uh, recording the studio tour today. And um, part of that, of course, there's a whole host of things going on with uh, giveaways and special videos coming out over the next two weeks. And the first prize is already right here behind me, which is an X52 Pro Hotus that I'm gonna keep giving away. There's also a tablet up for grabs. There's a bunch of arcs up for grabs. Still trying to get some more stuff in. Lots of stuff is gonna be, uh, be given away, not today, but on the live stream on the 9th, Saturday the 9th next week. So, um, Stay tuned for that. I did have an announcement video out yesterday, showcasing um, showcasing all of this, explaining everything, how you sign up, and the prices, and what events are gonna happen, and all that. So you can go and you can uh, you can check that out, or you can just go and huh, I could tax myself there, nice. And you go and you check. Why does it link YouTube? That's not what I wanted. To, uh, I hate that the copy pasting is not working cross PC. Hold on. Uh, give me a second. That's the wrong link. That's just the link to this live stream. Uh, just get this thing working and then log in and then go to the dashboard. Normally the clip holder between the two PCs are shared. So if I copy something on one PC, it's also copying on the other one. For some reason that's not working today. So I'm just gonna try that again. There is the link for the giveaway you go and sign up for that but do go and watch that announcement video because there's more information in there that you might need but yeah good evening everybody let's get um let's dive right into it i've taken out a few builds and in the interest of trying to get through a few more builds this time than i usually do i'm going to start with some fairly simple straightforward ones 
and then we might dive into some more, more complicated builds later on um and i've taken some that are a little challenging a little bit more difficult to build um and i think the first one was a you drunk laura who posted one here just before the stream for like an entry-level mining ship and and it's actually something i did a while back for my uh, sidewinder to anaconda or sorry sidewinder to a fleet carrier thing um where i did do some considerations to what ships to use um and of course we can when we need to do a ship build the first thing we need to consider is like how many often it is like what is the limiting factor here and with any ship builds it's, it's often the internals so what we're going to try to do now is see if we can build a ship less than three million so we're going to be spending less than three million to get ourselves a mining ship no engineering obviously we're going to do an entry level um but we need to think about like how what do we need in terms of modules right we need at least a detailed surface scanner we're gonna need a refinery we're gonna need a prospector a collector and a cargo rack that would i would i be considering the bare minimum in terms of, of optional internals for a mining ship that means that's five optional internals now we can sort these by price and say if we want to build a less than three million then we are already limited to this range of ships here we can sort of highlight all those ships that are then a a option okay we can then begin to count the internals and see so here we have six is there any of these that has less than five internals i don't think so i think they're all good on that part but one thing that's worth noticing here is we already have class five we only have two ships here because we won't of course has as much cargo as we can so either something like you can see the cobra mark four i'm not gonna go with that one the cobra mark three could be an interesting choice the viper mark four could be an interesting choice the dolphin and the type six i think so let's try and take a look at those ships because they have a large number of internals and they're also relatively uh, relative they have relatively big ones Okay, in terms of hard points, actually, let's look at the power distributor here. They are all class three power distributors, so we can't really get, and I believe that's also the largest. Okay, so this is a point to be made about the Diamondback Explorer having a class four, so that could potentially run three lasers if you wanted to, maybe. But since it's gonna be lacking significantly in the uh yeah you know what maybe the time by explorer i mean compared to a viper it's maybe i don't think maybe the, it's actually not bad compared to a viper to be honest and the time explorer has a pretty good jump range we're not going to be able to get as much out of it as we could in like a type six. Okay, but if we have three million to play around with, I think I'm going to go away from the Cobra. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Oh, great. Now that all disappeared. Uh, we're looking at the, the Diamondback Explorer, the Dolphin. I, God damn it. Diamondback Explorer, Dolphin. No, let me count, scroll that again. Ah, God damn it. Coriolis, Diamondback Explorer, Dolphin, and Type 6. I think those are the ships I'm going to be trying, trying to work with today. Um, actually, also note that the Diamondback Explorer is the only ship that's going to be able to fit three mining bases. You know what? I think we're just gonna do a showdown between the Explorer and the Type 6 and let's see what we can do with these. So let's just start by clearing out the builds here. We don't want anything in them as default way with all this. Here, of course, we're gonna have uh, some... We're gonna go and pay to fix some, uh, some fixed mining laces here like that. And the lower slot here, of course, is going to be a surface scanner. Then we're going to put in a refinery to a refinery. We're going to look at the prices later. We're just going to now just throw things in there. 
and then we're going to reduce the price which is i probably do not want a 2a refinery probably going to drop that down to like uh like a two low or something see so already there we have like a lot down in terms of um in terms of money because we need to keep this under three million so we have a little bit of room to play with still um then we're gonna need a we're gonna need oh do we need a fuel scoop maybe okay i don't know we're gonna need a prospector and a collector let's use this class three for the collector three a collectors for time are they expensive no they're not good then we've probably got to put a 1A prospector in here. Thanks for the follows on Twitch. Again, we ideally we wanted an extra prospector, but we are doing an interlevel ship. We still have plenty of money to play around with here. So we have two collectors. We probably want more. A little bit more wouldn't hurt, but let's try to get some cargo in. 5E cargo rack. We put two of those in. We're up to 64 tons. And that is basically the like stuff we do absolutely do need. What we could make 64 tons is, is not bad. I mean, that's a decent chunk of money. If you're mining diamonds in this, it's going to take a while. But one thing, of course, is the time to depletion here is we're going to drain this weapon capacitor really quickly. And I think a 3A, where is the 3A powder distributor? It's actually not too expensive. And it's going to up our time to depletion here up to about a minute and a half. Oh, sorry, almost two minutes with four pips to weapons. That's more than enough to keep these lasers firing without running out. We're going to lightweight that one. We're going to lightweight that one. We're going to A rate the frame shift drive. We're going to spend some money there if we have it. We don't. See, that's too expensive for that A-rated frameshift drive. We're going to stay under 3 million. So B-rated. B-rated and we're good. Thrusters, we probably can't afford A-rated thrusters either. So we're going to B-rate those as well. Uh, oh, sorry. B-rate that one. There we go. And we're still too expensive. We need to save some money somewhere. Um, so let's go D-rated thrusters for range instead. Drop that down there. We have a little bit of money to play around with still. How are we doing for the power plant? Can we save a bit of money by downgrading the power plant to a 2A? We can actually go even lower. I mean, we're not that worried about the heat efficiency, I think. Build a new mining imperial cutter. Well, we can look at that as well. Uh, I'm just going to quickly finish this. I mean, staying within... I want to, try and do, uh, want to try and do it without engineering this time. Um, but basically, I think I would probably stick around here. And then for the last two ones, I might go with another cargo. What's our total range? So we only have 112 light years of jump range with a full tank and a full cargo. So here I'll probably put in a fuel scoop. 4A is probably going to be way too out of our price range. So how a, how big of a fuel scoop can we fit within our budget? There we go. That is probably something like that I would do. If somebody asks me to say, give me a good build, at least on a Type 6, let's just try to do pretty much the same thing on a Diamondback Explorer, right? Because I think we could do something very, very similar over here. Um, again, with a, a surface scanner there. A refinery save a bit of money on the refinery and be rated maybe yeah oh this is already really really expensive we need to really be careful with our money here i'm not sure if we can keep the diamond back under under that limit um up here we're gonna go with cargo and we're gonna go cargo oops that's the wrong com issue there we go we gotta go a we need the 1a prospector we can't fine without a 1a prospector and <laughs> then we need collectors 3a collector let's move that down there we of course need those mining laces let's put three of those in there 
Time to depletion three seconds. This is probably gonna push us. Oh, it's gonna be power distributor. Killback would be more budget friendly. Yeah. But killback doesn't that's gonna be difficult to build a killback under three million. That was the task. So I think I think killback is out of the option if you want to keep lower than three million, which was the task that was set here. So as you can see here behind the chat now, of course, we are basically have nothing left in the budget right now. Um, and there's not a low what we can actually do to save anything at all right now. So we derate that one and derate that one. That's not going to do anything good for our things either because we don't really. I don't think the Diamondback. If we want to stay below that, it, I mean the Diamondback is a good mining ship, right? I mean, of course, problem is those mining lasers can't really keep those firing anyway. Um, we could probably mine with two lasers for twelve seconds. That's okay. Um, it's not ideal. I would actually probably consider something like the type six here. I don't think this is gonna work within that budget constraint. So if somebody asked me, what would you do for a six million or three million ship? Then this would be it. Let's, um, there's been a lot of requests for a diamond, new diamond mining cutter. So we can go ahead and, uh, ugh, the copy pasting is not working again. Uh, what, how do I do this? Why is cross PC copy pasting not working? Okay. You know what? We're just gonna go and watch my own live stream here for a second. There we go. Mute that. I can post the links. There we go. Uh, square through the. Wow. Twitch TV. There we go. And mute myself over there. Boom. Where's the chat? There's chat. Chat rules. Yes, I'm aware of the chat rules. There we go. Okay. Let's move on. And let's just quickly try and do a mining cutter, right? Because let's just move on really, really quickly. Remember, this is running shieldless, of course, but. There was a request for a mining cutter, so let's do that. Imperial cutter. Let's see what we can do with that. Once again, we're gonna clear the build, and we're gonna put in some some fixed mining lasers. Boom! One, two, three. We're gonna a rate that. Now we're gonna go in a more like no expense. Uh, like go for everything. Go broke for everything. Just. Price is not an issue here. We're just going to go and get as much mining out of this as possible. So the power distributor here alone, and we're going to go and we're going to... Should we just go charge enhanced for that? You know, we're going to ask, we've got a weapon focused. Weapon focused. I think cluster capacitor for longer. Because how many lasers? So we can actually run four lasers for half a minute with this setup. Is that faster than Super Conduit? Uh, slightly better with Super Conduit. Um, and yes, we are gonna do full engineering on this. We're gonna derate the sensors because we don't really need that. We're gonna lightweight it for jump range, derate the life support and lightweight that as well for even better jump range. Talking about jump range, A rate the frame shift drive. We're gonna go increase range and mass manager. Thrusters, let's get some good thrusters. This ship is known to um, it's known to um, um, to drift quite a bit, so dirty drive, drag drive, the thrusters. There we go. Basically, I'm building, rebuilding my mining ship. I mean, I already have a build on this somewhere, but let's just do it anyway. Here we want the surface scatter. Here we want the three A prospector. Here we want the refinery. Uh, for a refinery let's just go and lightweight that one there these are the restricted so we're not really going to use those for anything right now here we're going to put in 
5A collectors. Oh, remove that again. Lightweight. Yeah, lightweight that like so. Oh, like so. Let's see here for cargo. Cargo there, cargo there. That gives us a few slots left here where we got to put in a fuel, fuel scoop. Got to put in a shield. Um, are dirty drive drag drives preferred for combat? Yes, they definitely are. Um, da, 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 da. We're still here 30 seconds on the mining lasers, which is perfect. Yeah, okay, so the, one of the points, of course, is, I mean, basically, if you want the mining build, the easiest way would be to go to the commander's toolbox, go to ship builds, and we can go to mining, and there should already be a mining python, what's the mining clipper somewhere? Yeah, yeah, imperial yeah, cut, cutter, here it is. We open that up. That is the build that I've been running so far. Because it's very, very similar to what I've been running here. Of course, this is maybe a little dated because there is no fuel scoop. And with only 124 here, we do want to change this up. But we could actually use this as a as a platform, right? You can see on this build here, I do run um I do run with two laces and two lances. And run the two lances because um, the position of these is all the way back of the nacelles. I mean, you need to get really, really quick for those to work. So yes, it is quicker if you go with class two lasers here, but because they're sitting there all the way back on the, on the nacelles, all the way back of the engines of the ship, that does mean that you're gonna have a hard time keeping um, um, keeping those lasers uh, on the rock because you need to be so quick or so close to it. So basically with this, I would probably now, because we have to travel so far, I would probably drop one of the collectors and then put in that... Um, there we go, that 6A fuel scoop in there just for uh, for that. I mean, so we can actually get out to those 200 plus light year um, cell locations that we quite often have to go to anyway. So this is probably something like this I would recommend and this is I haven't really checked up on the shields. They haven't been running this through the shield tester, but probably something like this is what uh, I would end up doing. And again, I'm gonna post. Um, I'm gonna post. You know what? I'm just, actually just. I think Don Lars already posted. If you go to the commander's toolbox and you go in on the ship builds and go to mining, there you go. Uh, the build is right there. Just keep in mind you need to swap out one of those collectors for a fuel scoop so you can actually get there. Okay. Let me just see what other suggestions there were for ship. Oh yeah, this one is fun. A PVE clipper. Now this might seem like a pretty ordinary straight up thing, not too difficult to do, but I'll talk to you why I think this is interesting. So if we go with the clipper here and clear that out. One of the problems that I've always seen with a clipper is if we go here and fit a 7A prismatic on this, and even if I go full on hit points, I go resistant, uh, sorry, not resistant. Um, I go with uh, a, re a re reinforced high cap on this and I then fit in some, some shield boosters here and all of these. I also go heavy duty, uh, heavy duty, super capacitor. And I just copy those all over the place. Scroll down, maybe you guys can see it as well here behind the chat. There you go. If I just do that and just Forget about the power plant being an issue right now. You can still we're still only quote unquote only getting two thousand hit points out of our shields. This is the max you will ever be able to pull out of this thing, not including uh, like uh, uh, guardian shield shield banks or reinforcement and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I've always found the clipper shield to be a little underwhelming in terms of um, of actual hit points. So what I want to do here is just forget about the shields for now and let's just simply talk about what we can actually do with everything else on it and remember we're going to do a combat build here so again sensors 
I personally prefer to D-rate it, and then you can go D-rate long range. I can't remember if that's better than going A-rate and lightweight. I think it's better to go A-rate and lightweight. We can do, we can go A-rate and lightweight. I think that's better. Whereas D-rate and lightweight that. Yeah, it's almost the same. You get slightly, slightly heavier, but longer. Anyway, let's get a bit of power distribution in there. <clears throat> Um, so if this is going to be a PvE ship, a kill wound scanner is an option, but not a not a mandatory thing. Um, I'm just gonna go D-rate, lightweight this stuff here, uh, just because. Frame to drive, we want as much jump range out of this as we can. Increase range best manager. There we go. So this gives us pretty decent jump range so far. We're gonna keep an eye on that. Thrusters, A rate the thrusters, and we're gonna go dirty drive, drag drives for that. And the power plant for now, we're just gonna keep that as a 6A, and then we're gonna manage that. That's always the last thing you do when you do ship builds. Always do the power plant as your very last thing. If you're just playing around with Coriolis, just put a five, the, the biggest 5A, or six, or the, the biggest A rated overcharged one shot power plant in there. Um. So, what do we need here? Well, it's been a while since I've done a PvE build, isn't it? Um, we definitely want to reserve this for shield. And I guess if we're doing a PvE build anyway, I, I mean, put a collector in there because like, we can scoop up some um, some materials and a small cargo, I guess. There we go. So we can just have a few limpets. We can synthesize them as we run. They're not that uh, not that expensive to synthesize. Um, if you are on this type of ship, we're doing this model of engineering anyway. Let's lightweight that. Um, okay, so we have a few options here. We're just gonna fit that um, that prismatic shield generator back here. We have some options here that we could do to strengthen the shield. So here's my train of thought. Because the shield on the clipper is a little underwhelming to me, um, you can see here, this module here took us from 360 to 360 to 575 in hit points. So my train of thought here was to actually go with a very resistant heavy loadout on the generator. Um, and then get most of my hit points from the uh, from the reinforcement banks. What I could do is you actually get quite a few hit points even from the lower slots down here. So here we could fit a um, a B-rated shield cell bank with specialized boss shell, like so. That gives us a tremendous amount of hit points. You can see here we have like two thousand megajoules in shield hit points in that shield cell bank so next up we can then go and we can have a look at the so here we could go with the shield reinforcement packs for d shield enforcement packs in those two already there that's giving us what 360 something um and the lower ones here is pretty much whatever you like. I mean, we could just go even more, even more shield reinforcement packs. I mean, still down here, we're getting a hundred megajoules. And that's a lot on this, on this ship. We're just gonna try with all these guardian, guardian shield reinforcement packs. There we go. Already there without even putting shield, any engineering on the shield generator and any shield boosters in. We all know. Yes, we are getting to that, Dongalor. But the reason why I'm doing it in this order is because I need to know how many shield cell banks we have, have, have here. Um, and before we can do that, I need to know what we can do in terms of weaponry. Now, we have a power distributor here that we're going to go charged, enhanced, and super conduit. But I'm going to sh gonna show you why I'm doing it in this order. Right now, I'm not going to do anything into the shields. I'm not going to do anything with the utilities. Okay. I just want to see what we can do in terms of weapons here. If this is going to be a PvE ship, it is a relatively maneuverable ship. Um, but I'm going to go with a safe bet that I know works. 
And that is, should we go high with the laser? Can we run two? Could I run two beam lasers here? We're not gonna run a heat sink. So what would happen if I went overcharged thermal vent on these? I'm not going to go long range because we could go long range, but it's going to cost us quite a bit in the damage department, I think. Long range thermal vent. We could do that. It is going to cost us a bit in the damage damage output, but again, that extra but I get three kilometer range is actually not bad. But again, the 600 meter fall off. Oh, that fall off is pretty brutal. You can see it down here if we take this one here. And we go to the profiles. Here you can see the damage, uh, our damage profile. You can see here we have our full potential, full damage potential, all the way out to the 600 meters, and then it begins to drop off. And when you're out to a kilometer and a half, um, you have pretty much lost, not quite, almost half of your damage per second, already out at a kilometer and a half. So pretty much this ship should not be engaging anything further out than 1, 1 1.2. That's where the ship is most effective, right? Um, but if we go and have a look at the same thing here with a, uh, with a similar thing. What about a mining sidewinders for beginners? How can you copy slots to another module? You hold down Alt. Uh, I pulled down the left Alt key click and drag then you copy it so if we go and move this over to long range thermal vent then you can see there's the damage profile for the second beam laser and you can see here again at about the kilometer and a half point that is where they cross over but problem is are we going to be able to do much damage out there no nah, probably not so i think i mean i don't know if this is really worth it um in this case, I think in this case, because it is a more mobile ship and it is a relatively fast or a really, really fast ship and we are really mobile, I think I'm more comfortable going with overcharged than I would be on something big like a, like a Corvette because it's more difficult to, to keep close to people in a Corvette than it is in a Clipper. So because we probably will have the, uh, the upper hand in both speed and maneuverability, I'm more comfortable going overcharged because I think it would be easier to to manage the range, right? So let's try overcharged here and we can keep that firing for six seconds right now. Wow, okay. Well, that was not a lot. We do need those. Because then I would probably go with multi cannons, but it doesn't give us a whole lot of kinetic damage. Should we split it? So put a laser here. Because the six seconds we're down to there is a little bit too brutal. Alternatively, we could go instead of overcharge, we could go efficient. Efficient thermal vent. No, that's that no, that's no good. No good going e efficient because the, the the cooling the cooling that the, you get from thermal vents is based on the heat output of the weapon. So if I go efficient and I lower my thermal capacity and my thermal output of the weapon by sixty percent, that means I get sixty percent less cooling from the relate the weapon as well. This is why overcharged is such a nice thing because we actually get fifteen percent extra while also getting more damage. So you can kind of get my point is I don't want to go efficient. Um, even though it would help on the uh, on the capacitor issue, we do seem to get if we're running with two overcharge because six seconds of, of, of firing is, is ah, we haven't even filled down those up those slots down here. Charge and hand super, yeah, that's just ah. I would really like to see that being a bit more manageable. Um, so here's what I'm what I'm considering to try and make that better is if I go with a 
a beam laser here and try the same thing here and the thermal vent there. Now we have 10 seconds. That's a little bit better. 10 seconds is a decent amount of time for those two lasers. So you could have all the lasers in one side and then I would probably go multi cannons just because uh, uh, fixed, no, gimbaled. Um, weapon focused, okay. People are suggesting we try weapon focused. We do that real quick. What happens if we just drag that down there? Um, we have to three seconds now. Let's just go and let's turn off that one beam laser. The two, the hell is it? The two D beam laser. Let's shut that off. So there we have the six seconds. And if we go weapon focused, then we're up to ten seconds. Super conduit. Super conduit did nothing. Cluster capacitor give us one second extra. But just because I want the other ones to also work. Okay, then we act up to 10 seconds. That's more manageable again. What happens if we add the multi cannons? Uh, gimbaled multi cannon. And we're gonna go, these we can probably overcharge without any, any issues at all. Nine seconds when everything firing. Um, and then drag that on there. One of these. Actually, you know what? Let's just put uh, corrosive of one and then whatever you like on the second one. I'm just going to put corrosive here as well, but pretty much put whatever you want there. Um, it, maybe it's a good idea with a weapon focused just to keep those. I mean, eight seconds is still not great, but it's better than nothing. Okay. But this leaves us now with we had plenty of power. That was what I was looking for, right? For the prismatic. So now we can go and we can begin to use the shield tester over here on the commander's toolbox. So I'm just going to type in some like numbers for where I think the damage output is going to be. We're going to say we've got 10 explosive, 10, 50 thermal, 50 kinetic, and let's just put in a little bit of absolute. Let's put in 10 just to be on the sure side. Um, in term, terms of damage time on target, depends. I mean, if you're taking this into a conflict zone, then it would probably be a little bit less, but let's put this down to like 40%, meaning the enemy will have a 40% a, a time on target on you, how often they will be shooting you. I think because of the speed and mobility, we should be able to keep out of their line of fire a little bit more efficient. Um, and then of course here, we're going to select the ship that we're flying. And today we're going to testing a clipper. We're going to fit a class seven. We're going to use all four slots. Thanks for all the follows, by the way. We got to fit A-rated shield boosters for our... Where was that? That was the shield, shield cells. We have 2,162. So 2,162 in the shield there. The Guardian Shield Reinforcement Packs. We're going to calculate that up real quick here. I'm just going to calculator because I don't want to sit and do this in my head. So from the Guardian Shield Reinforcement Packs, we have... 182, two of those, and then we have two times 505, that's 210, plus 61. That is 635. So that means now I can go in here to the Guardian and say 635. I'm going to allow prismatics, and then I'm just going to click Calculate. And then, if I zoom in a bit here for you guys as well, Uh, Andreas asks if I will do a challenge to, a, to do a mining sidewinder. Okay, we could do a mining sidewinder. That sounds fun. So I'm just going to finish this up. Then we're going to go and play around with the mining sidewinder. So you can see here, just as, uh, as I suggested in the beginning, we're going to go very resistant heavy because of the low base shield on this thing. Um, so it suggests we go bi-weave thermal resistant force block, then resistance augmented force block all the way. I just wondered what would happen if we said, okay, we're not that good at keeping the targets away. So let's put that up to like 65 and then play around with it again. Then it swaps over to a prismatic thermal resistant force block. Um, but it still wants resistance augmented force block in all those in here. So if we go ahead and make those, even with a poor time on target, 
or well, the good time on target from the enemy. So we're gonna go five and then go force block. Um, there we go, put those in there. And then basically we just need to figure out where's the tipping point between prismatics and biweaves. Um, 50. 50 puts us back on the biweaves. What about 55? 55 is still biweaves. 60. 60 is prismatics. Okay, so somewhere between 55 and... Uh, so somewhere between 55 and 60. So if you think you have combat skill to keep the enemy from firing on you for more than well, if you can keep if the enemy if you think the enemy is going to be firing at you then less than 60 percent of the time so if you can keep them away from you um for more than than no more than 40 percent of the time sorry because that's the time you keep it away this is their time on target like percent of time taking damage right so if you can take damage for less than 60 percent of the time from your maneuverability then you should go by weaves so if your combat is, if your combat, like your, your flying skills is a little, maybe you're not that, uh, maybe a new player or you haven't done that much combat, then you should hit prismatics. But otherwise, by weave, thermal resist, force block is the way to go. So by weave with thermal resistant and force block, right? Yeah. This gives us a total survival time about two minutes under sustained fire with this. There you go. I think for a PVE clipper, this would be something like this I would do. And of course you can then sit and you can say, oh, but if you want to, to swap that module out here, or you don't want the collectors here, you want maybe more shield reinforcement packs or something like that. You can go, you can swap that out and you can plug all the numbers in here over in the commander's toolbox as I just showed you, and you can do your own calculations. The final thing we actually need to do, as I said, is the power plant. Um, we are running like 90% right now. So if we just put a 6A in there, see, we do not have it off. We're actually pretty far under. Uh, so we do need some levels of overcharging because I think even with an armored, we're not going to get enough to keep this beast running. So we are going to go overcharged. But how much overcharge do we need? Can we go with a 4? Yes, we can. We can go for thermal spread, like so. <clears throat> jump range is still acceptable, um, around the 26 light years of jumping. That's definitely not bad for a combat ship. Total range 100 light years, again, for a combat ship, it's not too terrible. Wonderful, wonderful speeds up here. Almost 500 doing without boosts, boosting up over 600 meters a second. And I'm pretty sure if I go over here to profiles, yeah, look at those numbers there. That is, uh, that's pretty beautiful in terms of our maneuverability. Is that 26 degrees, 23 degrees a second yaw? That's pretty damn good. Okay. That is pretty much the build um, that I would go for if you want to make a combat clipper. As before, because the copy pasting is not working, I'm just gonna manually go over here and post this. Okay. Some of you guys said mining sidewinder, and I know you like to see me suffer, so let's do that. Um, God damn it. Where is it? Ah, uh, sidewinder. Okay, well, right off the bat, we do not have a lot of room to play with here. This is gonna be. <laughs> it's gotta be interesting. Start with the mining lasers. Two of those. Five seconds right now. We need to up that. That needs to be to like 30 seconds. Can we get that at all? No. So there's no point in fitting two lasers because 11 seconds on two lasers doesn't matter. Then I would. Okay, it actually makes sense then. Because one can't empty it, so you're actually better off having that extra laser. I thought one laser would be enough to completely empty it. Um, 
Okay, so should we do a budget build or should we just go like spend all the money on a sidewinder? Because if we're gonna go and engineer it as well, we can of course go weapon focused again. Um and then cluster capacitor probably is the best again. No, but this is look at this. If I this is um time to drain weapon capacitor with all weapons firing and four pips to weapons. So I don't need to sit and, and move my pips around down here. Um this is already calculated in here. But actually if I do web, web if we engineer this. Okay, all the money on the sidewinder and all the engineering. So we're definitely gonna go engineer that 1D power distributor or 1A power distributor for 50 seconds of burn time on two small mining lasers. Whew. Okay, so again, we're gonna try to get some jump range. We're gonna go lightweight our life support and our sensors because we're just gonna go mining. Frames with drive, obviously A rate that with increased range and mass manager. Thrusters. Enhanced performance thrusters. There we go. Dirty drive, drag drives. Look at this beast. <laughs> can we even can we even just put a bigger thing in there? There we go. Plenty of power now. Look at this. Look at the speed of this thing. <laughs> you have a mining sidewinder that almost goes 500 in normal space, boosting over 700. This thing is gonna outrun the clipper from before. <laughs> Imagine seeing a, a sidewinder just coming, zooming by you at 700 just to slam on the brakes and begin mining. Ah, <laughs> oh, this is stupid. I like it. Okay, we're gonna need that. Um... <laughs> gonna... I almost want to build this. Um... <laughs> we're gonna need a detailed server scanner no it's just people are just giving people on twitch are asking like a mining sidewinder starting fresh no i did that a couple of weeks ago this is just people giving me challenges to make uh, uh different mining builds um, <laughs> um yeah okay so we got that we got that surface we're gonna need a uh, gonna need a prospector a prospect of course and we're going to lightweight this we don't want to engineer this one we could go expand the probes i guess just because Let's go balls to the walls with this thing. Um, we're gonna need a cargo. And we're gonna need a collector. We're gonna only have gonna able to have one collector. Which is gonna suck, but okay. Um, well, we're gonna need a refinery. 1A refinery. One A collector. Refinery. Don't want to go shielded, it just takes extra power. Collector, lightweight the 1A collector. Dolphin mining ship, that would be hilarious. I've been flying around in a dolphin mining for quite a bit. So, okay, so here is the... Um, here is the important thing. The big question when you're doing this build. <laughs> we have currently four tons of cargo right do we double our cargo and go with eight tons of cargo but again if you boost 700 meters a second in an asteroid field in this ship <laughs> if you hit anything you're gone you're dust <laughs> this this ship is just gonna obliterate i on the surface of the rocks or you try to protect yourself and put a shield in there David says, can someone teach me how to mine? If you drop by Discord, I'm pretty sure that someone can give you, uh, show you the loops and how to mine. I think, I think we're gonna go cargo just because four tons is a little on the low side. Now, alternatively, you could put in a fuel scoop for extra range. No risk, no fun. <laughs> I mean, we can't even do anything with shield boosters because <clears throat> we don't have we don't have a we don't have a shield at all. I 
I'm sorry, but the shield is not going to make a difference. Not at 700 meters a second. Okay, how much? Okay, if I were to put shields on, I'm not sure we're going to do it, but if I put a 2A prismatic on there and I put reinforced high cap and I put shield boosters in here, also with heavy duty super capacitor, like so. Oh, I can just... No. <laughs> Thought we could actually run this. Uh, what can we do? Okay, we've got to play around with the groups a bit. And then if we put in a shield, we can get almost 300 hit points of shield out of this, of absolute. It probably won't survive. Oh, but that took our boost speed way down. Wow, look at that. Look at our speed just from fitting that prismatics. No, no, no. Nope, nope. Are they so heavy? Oh, look at this. If I put a heavy-duty supercapacitor on there, it just takes 100 meters a second off my speed. So definitely got to go cargo here. That also means we have a lot more headroom here to go with something like a D-rated maybe. Uh, we don't want to overheat, so let's go A-rated and then go maybe armored. It doesn't help our jump range, which is actually pretty good. Surprisingly good, actually. Hold on, A rated alone. So actually, we could actually go and do something silly like low. Could we save a little bit of? Could we actually go D rated? And then a little bit of overcharged, maybe. Efficiency is not good. I would be afraid of overheating. That's the problem with those lasers continuously firing. They are going to generate some serious heat. So I really don't want to go away from my A-rated power plant, but we could go low emission. Because we have quite a bit of headroom here, so could we go like a few levels low emission? Yeah. We can go grade 3. We can't do grade 4 low emission. This is going to be a seriously cold ship. And then go, oh, hold on. If, oh, could I, could I cram it up to five? Could I go five thermal spread? I mean, this is cold. This is going to run really, really cold. But now we can, we got 2%, but we can do, we can deal with 2%. I'm just going to put non-important stuff like the frame shift drive into a second group like that. And that means whenever I, Whenever I deploy my weapons, my FSD is going to turn off. But when my mining lasers are out, I don't need my FSD. I'm not going to jump anywhere. But as soon as I'm done mining, I store my lasers. My FSD comes back online. And I'm ready to jump. It just gives me a little bit extra wait time for the FSD to charge up. Or to start up again after this. But overall... <laughs> this is stupid. <laughs> I think no shield going 700 meters a second. That's going to be dangerous. That's a little scary, actually. Rebuy will be low. Rebuy is really low. Actually, this is, I mean, there's less than 3 million as we talked about before. How much hold you can get? I think this is actually, this is actually a pretty fun little build. <laughs> I might even consider doing that in game. It wouldn't take much time. I mean, there's a bit of engineering to do with all these core internals, right? But 
it's not too bad, I guess. Anyway, let's just <laughs> gotta post these links for you guys as well, so you can. Uh, There we go. Okay. Let me see what the next thing is going to go and play around with is. Try to get the fastest boost speeds possible in a type 9. That shouldn't be too difficult. I mean... Type 9, strip it down completely, don't want anything in there at all. Thrusters are up there. Thrusters are dirty drive and drag drives. I believe that is the fastest speed, right? Double breached, yes. And it's also clean drives. No, it is exactly, yeah, it is. Dirty drive, drag drives. Then for this, we're just going to lightweight this. Oh, and what is the mass? Yeah, I don't think we're going to get any lower than this. Oh, we can. Hold on here. Profiles. Um, minimum mass, 945 tons. Okay, we actually have a little bit of room to play with here. You can see we have about a few tons we can drop, so let's, let's play around with this. So fastest boost speed alone was just power distributor. Um, we need to be able to boost, so let's go with a, a 4D engine focused supercapacitor. Boost interval 9 seconds, that's pretty good. We dropped quite a bit of mass there. On that frame shift drive, uh, 2D. We're not going to go anywhere. And let's just leave that unengineered. Thrusters are there. And the power plant just needs to be as light as possible while it can actually still run this ship. So, what if a 3A overcharged? Can that do it? It can. Putting us. With a full fuel tank, not quite at the optimal, but we could get down pretty fast. Can we, just, can we get a little bit more with a 3D engine focused cluster capacitor? Yeah, that would boost. I think that's the fastest you can do. Engineer the frame drive for strip down. There is no strip down, there's only a faster boot sequence. Increase range, which does increase the mass of the module, and shield it, which also increases the mass. So the only thing here that would make sense would be faster boot sequence, but it doesn't do anything for us at all. Oh, life support. Haha, <laughs> you're right. I haven't done that one. Forgot that one. There we go. There's a few extra tons to save there. And it gave us another meter per second. Ah, uh, the experimental effect for the FSD. Yeah, okay, so if you put a one in there and then strip down as an experimental. That didn't give us anything at all. Nothing measurable, at least. And we're about at a thousand tons fully laden. That's about as fast as I think we're gonna make this thing go. Um Okay, I had another build here I wanna do real quick. Um I can't remember who posted it, but the tech the question or the idea was a ship that uses a multi-short multi-short range PAs with thermal conduit that generate that general the general idea is to just create as much heat as possible while attacking um, and use the heat as a weapon 
Okay, so the idea is, let's just use it here. If we go with the... Um, um, plasma accelerator. We're just going to fit any plasma accelerator on here. There is an experimental effect um, on this called thermal conduit. Now, if we go and look up... Thermal conduit. You can see here, thermal conduit is, is an experimental effect. I'm zooming a bit. It's an experimental, well, well, experimental effect that can be applied to weapon through engineering. Is uh, where is it? Um, it's an experimental upgrade that increases damage output based on the heat level of the firing ship. Okay, so this is actually why I think this is pretty fun. And the idea is to have to build a ship with a <laughs> with a plasma accelerators that's just going to overheat the ship and then the more the ship overheats the more damage it does so what we will need is a ship with a terrible heat capacity and a ton of weapons Actually, you know what? Probably just playing around with the Type 9 here. Which weapon has... Like, if you go in here, it has a heat per second. Yes, we want, I think, the most heat per second we can get out of a weapon. Right? So, good contenders would probably be a beam laser that's overcharged. That here generates 6.1 heat per second what else could be good multi cannon cannons frag plasma accelerators where is this heat per second heat per second here is and if we don't overcharge this as well it's still not quite there What other options do we have? Because it also has the heat per energy. So, like damage per energy. Doesn't it have a heat per energy? Energy per second. No, I want heat per second. I can, of course, calculate that myself, but... Heat. I want heat per energy used, basically. But I guess heat per second is what we're going to go optimize for. Best ones is still a beam laser. What about a railgun? Oh, look at that. That thing can generate some heat really, really quickly. And if we overcharge it. Oh, you can't overcharge. Uh, rate of fire reduction is good. Power draw, no. Short range. Oh, here we go. Short range gives us extra thermal load on the weapon. So if we go with a sturdy, sturdy railgun with anything here that damages my heat. No, we don't have something to do with just to make it better. Then oversize it, I guess. Flow control it, multi servo, double breach. Let's just oversize it. Here we go, 31 heat per second from a multi-cannon. So I think my idea here is to have a web, some weapons that we don't really care about. We can use them. Um, yes. Yeah, we can use the weapons to, of course, do damage. But the main purpose of them is just to generate heat. To get the heat up so that you don't have to generate heat with the PAs. Um, get Imperial Hammers. Oh, the worst. Oh, yes. Here we go. Imperial Hammers. Short range Imperial Hammers. With oversized. There we go. 60 on heat per second. That's going to overheat something really, really quickly. So now we just need something with a ton of hard points 
and a bad heat capacity. That's going to overheat easily. Was there anything suggested in the message about what ships to use? Not necessarily on the Type 9. I know I don't want to use the Type 9 for this. We want something with more weapons on it. So basically just look at... Uh, we're going to need a few Imperial Hammers. But hold on, what size were those? They were size... So they were medium, right? Yes, they're medium sized. Okay. So I want something that has a ton of medium hard points. Not the beluga liner, because I also want some oh some some larger hard points. So Cotter? Cotter could be an amazing build for this. Challenger is decent when it comes to heat management. Yes, but we're looking for something that's crap when it comes to heat management. And the cutter, you know what? The cutter is known for being hot. So a cutter would actually be an excellent choice for this. We want the ship to be... Uh, or do we want something with a high? How does the thermal cascade actually, look, actually work? Is the amount of heat in the ship? So do we want a large heat capacity? I'm actually not sure. question is is it the percentage of heat or is it the amount of heat because that's not the same so if we did something like this hold on could we Could we, okay, let's just try this. Imperial Hammers with short range, <laughs> short range, though, oversized, and we're gonna pluck four of those in there. So the efficient energy per second, no, I want damage per energy, no rate of fire. I wanna know how much energy this thing consumes. Yes, that's true. You get more heat the less you have in your capacitor. Yeah, this is energy per second. But reload time on this is what? Rate of fire, range, fall off, ammo, weapon reload, one second. Okay, so we can actually, if we even put that, can it run that indefinitely? No, we can't. But if we put it weapon focused... Probably won't weapon focus super conduit for fast recharge. 19 seconds. Okay. So this is just our heat generation. Hold on. I'm just going to try something stupid here. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What happens if you take. Is it E rated that has the worst heat efficiency? Yes, it is. What happens if you take E rated and overcharge it? Resting heat doesn't seem to work properly. Anyway, I just want to see if we could make a ship that could actually get a resting heat so high that it would um that would just naturally sit in overheat, but I guess not. Um <laughs> and then for the rest here. We're gonna go plasma accelerators. Um, and for these, we're just gonna go, I guess focused is good. We could go overcharge just for the extra damage, but I think focused is good in this situation here um, because of the additional shot speed, making it easier to hit. 
uh, compared to something like long range, which doesn't affect our, it doesn't reduce our heat, which is actually what we want. So this is good. We definitely got to go focused. And then the whole point where they're supposed to go thermal conduit. So also here, we're going to go focused thermal conduit and more focused with thermal conduit. So basically our Imperial hammers, we're going to use those to just generate heat, heat up the ship with those hammers. And then once we're nice and hot, we're going to fire off the PAs and they should do a butt ton of money, a butt ton of, of, uh, of damage here. So rest here, sensors, bah, we're going to be firing these type of ways. Let's just go lightweight for the extra jump range. I always prefer that over having maybe on some combat ships, I would consider going with bigger sensors, but I don't know, keep that there, upgrade the frame shift drive to increase range as mass manager, upgrade the thrusters, keep those there. Dirty drive, drag drives, to upgrade the power plant. So, okay. Hmm. A ship you can only pilot by constantly popping heat sinks. <laughs> Could be fun, yeah. But I don't think it's doable. Yeah, exactly. There's people also that you can sign and run and then increase your heat that way. But I don't necessarily think that's the best way to do it. But what we do want here is a let's just find a prismatic a prismatic shield. We're even gonna be able to fit that. Let's just overcharge this and uh not thermal spread it. We're gonna go mass manager or very much it for extra power. Because we do have some pretty power hungry weapons here. Um, but we have some room to play with. Okay, what do we do now? We need, because yes, we are going to be relying on our, um, on our shield for protection, but we are going to be taking a lot of damage. Module reinforcement packs. Isn't this one of those cases where the Guardian ones is actually slightly better? Yes, the Guardian Motor Reinforcement Packs are better. Read set data. We're building a overheating cutter that's meant to focus on the thermal conduit special effect. I don't know. Somebody said it a silly idea, and I think it's actually pretty funny. Okay, but what I want here is I want modular reinforcement packs in here because we are going to be taking a ton of damage from heat. I want that to go in there to... Um, to the modern reinforcement packs, but they will of course run out of integrity as we are fighting. So we're gonna put in some AFMUs, which we're not going to engineer either. This is gonna be easy. These AFMUs, this is essentially gonna give us over sixteen thousand module hit points, right? So we can use this to repair our modular reinforcement packs when we are out of combat. And I hope these modular reinforcement packs are enough to keep us going. Then I want to see if I can fit a, if I can fit a shield cell bank in here. B rate that with specialized and bus shell. How's our power doing? We're cutting it close now. What about some shield reinforcement packs? I have basically no energy left, but gotta keep going. We might be able to save a little bit of energy here and there by managing shield reinforcement. Actually, no, I should take it here. Shield reinforcement. Oops, derate that. Boom. Mm, 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 mm. There we go. Okay, we have four percent over. We can manage four percent. Yeah, there we go. Now all this heating 
is also going to cause us a bit of armor damage as we overheat. So we probably want some, some more hit points in here. So we can go military, mirrored, or reactive. It doesn't really matter. We're just gonna we're just here for the uh, for uh, is the military that's the cheapest. Military is hundred eighty. Mirrored. Nope, I think it's military. Let's go military grade with heavy duty deep plating for extra extra hull. Just because all that heat's gonna make us overheat, right? Problem is, I have now left no space for shield boosters, which is a bit of a mistake, I think. So, how do we save a bit of power? What's using up all our power? Our thrusters are taking up a lot. The PAs, the hammers are taking up a lot. The shield cell bank, how much does these... If we go with resistance augmented force block on these... How much power does these consume? Because, see, that's 1.5. How much can I? Okay, so when we're fighting, we do not need the frame shift drive. We need the power distributed life support. Technically, we don't need the life support, do we? I mean, if I upgrade this to an A rate. Uh, power draw is slightly higher and then lightweighted we could actually turn the the power the life support off when we're fighting i mean remember we have 25 minutes of oxygen and the oxygen modular reinforcement pack doesn't protect you from heat damage are you sure so the damage doesn't go to the modular reinforcement pack before it goes in yeah, the AFMU is also pulling a bunch of power as well. Heat damage goes on everything. Oh, so the battery reinforcement packs are useless. Well, that saves us a bit of power. But basically, if we put. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so the frame should drive, all of this. We're going to need the cargo hatch. We don't need that. Oh, that was an AFMU. Oops. Cargo hatch. Move that away. Now we have a little bit of room to play with. I think two FMU should be good enough to keep ourselves. You know what? We should actually just fit. This AFMU use so much power. What I wanted to do was. Ah, hold on. All these goes in group three. And if these goes into group two. Yes, so here's what we're gonna do. Haha, ha, I got it, I got it. We are gonna fit. AFMUs. And here we're gonna go shield. Shield reinforcements here. Okay. Yes, we have a ton of AFMUs now, but what I hope is that with this, you can see with all these AFMUs off, we can actually keep them online even, as it is right now. We probably can't here in a second. But with all these AFMUs are, when, are off, that means when we store our weapons, they're gonna come. They're gonna come online. But the point of having this many is a one AF and you can only repair one module at a time. So by having this many, by having five of them on right now, where's the other one? That's there. Yes. By having five of these on right now, that means that when I then store my weapons and I go for a repair cycle, I can then repair five modules at a time, repairing a lot quicker. And then as soon as I'm ready to fight, AF and use goes offline. So what if I just keep those there and actually have Oh, no, that's for station two, but half my frameshift drive, half my cargo hatch, and half my life support working. 
Then I can go back and derate the life support again. Because with all those AFMUs offline, we have a lot of, of, of stuff to play around with here. Okay. Back to the shield tester. Same damage loadout. We are a bit slower here, so let's put this up at 65. Let's just, yeah, let's just keep it at 65. Change this to an Imperial Cutter. We're going to have a class 8 shield. We're going to push all the shield boosters in there. In shield cell banks, we now have 6597. So in shield cells, we have 6597. And in guardian stuff, we have a lot as well. Let me just clear this out. Grab Mesa Alloy Hull Packs instead of Shield. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, here, okay. Guardian Shield, there we go, thank you. So, let's just calculate how much hit points we get from those. We have... Oops, come here, phone. 215. Two of those. We have 8... 182, 816. So here we have 816. We're going to allow prismatics. Let's calculate. That took a while. Yeah, okay. No wonder. Look at that. That is almost 43 million different builds it, it has tested. But yes, prismatic reinforced thermal block. Gonna keep our prismatic. Gonna go reinforced with thermal block. And for the shields, we want three heavy duty supercapacitors. Shouldn't have removed that then. Three heavy duty supercapacitors, like so. And then rest is resistance augmented thermal block. Resistance augmented and thermal block. Boom, boom. How are we for power? Oh, ouch, that's not good. Even with our AFMUs in group three. This thing is still not flying. <laughs> God damn it. How much time does this survive? This can survive for a long time under sustained fire. Pretty good resistances and 7,000 hit points. This is a pretty uh, pretty badass shield, to be honest. That's going to take a beating to take down, but of course right now we can't power it. Okay, what can we do? Let's power down some things here. Thrusters, no. Shield cell banks, no. Shield boosters, no, no, no. No life support. We can do that trick again. Frame shift drive. Cargo hatch. What then? We're still not there yet. Oh. What do we do? How do we save a bit of power? I mean, the power hungry things, I mean, the hammers are, are really, really power hungry as well. So are all the PAs. Efficient thrusters. We have pulled everything out of these. Uh, I don't think we can do a lot here to reduce our power load. Hmm. How much power are we talking here? I 
I mean, we're only talking a small amount. Oh. Where do I save a little bit of power? You don't think I need a shield cell bank? Well, what would happen if we remove the shield cell bank? That could be a way to save some power. So remove those shields there, put that to zero, and calculate again. Then it wants reinforced high cap. And then let's try this. So if we change this over to reinforced, that increases our power draw. And then drop this one. And then it wants only three of these. It should be resistance, rest should be heavy duty. How are we doing now? Oh, is that is that actually flying? Problem is right now, even with our weapons retracted, we can't. <laughs> oh, we don't have the power to do this. Okay, let's do something else. Let's try to not allow prismatics. Then it just want normal shields. But what if we add in those... Uh, let's just do this again. Oh, not a B rated with specialized. There's a slight bump. Yeah, but I know I know about the. So right now our power generation is. Uh, yeah, let's see. Hold on. Let's just try this. Try this for a second here. What happens if we stand at those specialized boss shell? Yes. Six, five, nine, seven. Six, five, nine, seven. Add that back in there. And then calculate again. Then it wants a normal A rated shield reinforcement with reinforced thermal block. Let's try this. Shield generator with reinforced thermal block. And then only two super capacitors this time. And the rest were with thermal block on, right? Yes. See, we still can't. Even with our weapons back, we still can't. We still can't fire up those AFMUs, at least not all of them at once. Should we cut back on the number of AFMUs, maybe? Power saving. Yeah, okay, that's maybe actually a good point. So instead of going oversized, uh, where is it? Flow control on those. That's a good point. We're not going to lose a whole lot here. Where are we now? We're still pretty far off. I just think this is just too many AFMUs to keep that thing actually doing that. So what if I removed, well, what if I just removed those? We just weren't three of them. Now we're actually powering up. What about the Guardian reinforcement packs? Put those in. Uh, we're still like, we're 2% off. 2.7% off being able to fire this thing, actually getting this thing in the air and flying.
I need to just, and group one is also so close. You can see that there, it's just red. It needs to, here we just need to have the one, have that in uh, in the yellow. Downrate thrusters, group one shield booster. Du, 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 du. What if we move one shield booster? Uh, go that to seven and calculate. Two heavy duty, two heavy duties. Is that what we have now? Yes. So we're just gonna say take that out. Oh, now we can actually turn the ship on, but it still cannot deploy hard points. Cargo hash is turned off. Life support is even turned off right now. A heat sinker too, in case heat gets out of hand. Okay, how many shield boosters could we actually run? Okay, if we run six shield boosters, then this thing is actually flying. So let's calculate with just six shield boosters. One heavy duty, five of these others. So one, two, three, four. And... Five. Can we get better? Yeah, that's a, that's the next issue here. Next problem. Let's try this out for a second. So this is A-rated. Let's just open this up in a new tab. We're just going to sit and play around with the tester here. I can just keep this. I don't have to sit and type all this in again. Um... 336 in terms of survival time right now. What if I drop these back to B rated and calculate it again? But how much less power does a B rated use? That's the question. Resistance augmented force block. Did that go in? No, it didn't. Resistance augmented force block. See, there we go. That's like point, point 0.25. That should actually give me... That should give me a whole extra shield booster. So the question is, is it better to go with... With 7 B-rated? Yes, it is. It is better to go with 7 B-rated. What if we go C-rated? Could we then go, is 8 C rated then even better? Oh, no, 6, 2. Where was it before? Yeah. 8 C rated is... D rated thrusters save... Oh, but do we really want to derate the thrusters on a cutter? Ah, <laughs> not too... Yeah, we also have people suggesting that we go by weaves instead. It just still says that the best survival time is this setup here. Yeah, I think I think be, I really I really don't want to derate the thrusters. That that's that thing is just gonna you're not gonna be able. Remember, we are firing fixed weapons here. We need that maneuverability, I think, to be able to hit anything. Does it turn that much slower? Okay, let's have a look. Let's take something like the roll speed here, twenty five degrees a second. If I go and derate this. Oh, sorry, not D-rate. B-rate, right? For the most... Uh, minus 0.9. Yeah, okay, let's D-rate it. Dirty drive, drag drives. Again, we're down to... Okay, it's actually only one degree on the pitch. That's the roll, of course. Sorry. 59. Sixty-two. Okay, so actually, a, 
a tiny amount. We could actually maybe make this thing survive by just... Hold on. So what if we just bump that up to A, fit all of those there, boom, go. And then we're back to normal reinforced. Okay, hold on, hold on. How much? Hold on, hold on, hold on. How much could I save? So an A rate is going to save me 2.8 is 2.8 megawatts extra. And how much could I save on the thrusters? That's four megawatts. If I derate the thrusters, that's four megawatts. Hold on, I could go prismatics again with this. If I go allow prismatics, calculate that. Prismatics, okay, let's try this again. Let's swap this out for a prismatic and we're gonna go reinforced thermal block. This one is heavy duty, right? Yes. So I need three heavy duties and resistance off with thermal block, put those in there. Now the ship can't fly because our thrusters are taking up all the power. But let's just try B rated. Nope. Yeah, yeah, B rate those. Dirty drive. And drag drives. That is not enough. If I derate the thrusters with dirty drive drag drives, that is still not enough. Okay. But if I swap this out for a normal shield, I just really like those prismatics. Uh, let's just go with a normal shield and then put, what does it then want? Then just want reinforced, reinforced double block, reinforced double block, and also swap one of those out. And now we're talking. Can we get the thrusters up to B then? Yes, we can. Look at this. This is actually, oh, that's tight though. <laughs> so the ship will just now just turn on with the weapons deployed. As soon as you deploy the weapons, the cargo hatch, the life support, the frame shift drive, and all the AFMUs will turn off. This is going to be a really complex, this is a really complex build. That's why I picked it, because it was a really fun challenge. But I think this is as good as it's going to get for now. Of course, I haven't flight tested this, and this is so far away from anything I've ever done. But again, the A to B has so little effect on our here and on the performance here. So I think B-rated thrusters is okay. This will fly. I'm gonna post this link. I don't want to spend more time on it now. Whether you should go and build this, this is so experimental that it's probably gonna need some tweaking if you actually want to use it in game. But at least for now, for a uh, for theory crafting, playing around at your, yes. Yeah, the building, if you want to save the building, it's in chat now, you can go and can grab it from there. Yes, as people says on Twitch, this looks absolutely silly. That is the point. <laughs> this would take some time to build I mean, there's not that much engineering in it there's the shield boosters of course and all the weapons but ah thank you Donglor Donglor has stored all the buildings I will post them in a comment 
awesome stuff. How long can you survive a stuck eagle? That is all the t <laughs> How long can I survive a stuck eagle? Uh, what we under defense, I think. So against the stock eagle, the shield is this seconds. I mean, if you just want to see, if you just want to build really, really quick to do something that can survive a stock eagle for a long time. Um, basically you just go it doesn't really matter the size it's just you just need what's okay what's the smallest ship that you could survive a stock eagle for indefinitely um type 10 okay we need eight let's just do the anaconda then um i mean oh hold on could we what's the smallest shield you can fit on the anaconda shield generator okay that's a class three so if we go class three reinforced and fast charge and over here we go a rated and we go resistance augmented thermal block i think i'll just spam all the resistance augmented thermal blocks in here boom no not reinforced actually let's go let's go let's go thermal block uh thermal block fast charge now eight minutes are we up to now that was not a whole lot i thought i could completely out generate the oh because of course because it uh yeah okay the generation of course doesn't count when you're being fired at so that's right, forgot that. So, uh, just go Imperial Cutter. Let's go 8A Prismatics. So, we can just test it over here. If we have all of these to zero for now, right? And then we go Imperial Cutter, all that up there. And let's give him 100% damage time on target. And we're going to allow Prismatics. Prismatic Reinforced High Cap. Oh, interesting. Prismatic Reinforced and High Cap. And the shield boosters were quite an interesting setup here. Uh, five heavy duty super capacitors. Two, three, four, five. And then a resistance augmented thermal block. And a resistance aug whoops, resistance augmented force block. Now we're up to that the shield will hold for an hour and 25 minutes, which is pretty good. Does it, is the rules that the ship has to be flyable, I guess? Because I'm questioning, does, does this count in shield shield banks? It does. Hold on, did that just go down? No, okay. And we're going to put more shield cell banks in here. I'm just going to see how much time we can make this thing survive a stock eel.
until we, as long as we have power, we're going to keep piling these on. And we don't want, we don't want to power off the thrusters. We're going to power off the life support, the cargo hatch, not the power distributor, but the frame shift drive and the sensors. We're going to power all that stuff off that we don't need. Um, <laughs> yeah. Shield cell bank. Oh, hold on. These are all A rated. I'm doing this wrong. Specialized bus shell. That's more, right? Specialized bus shell. Yes, it gives me slightly more hit points. Stored hit points in these. So let's put those in instead. Specialized bus shell. Well, adding pips to system, I actually don't know if that counts that in. It does. Let's add four pips to systems. Add more shield cell banks. I guess it's a fair point that the that the, the life support should be able to keep me alive for longer. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, fair point. If I don't have a life support on, I'm not going to be able to survive for hours because my life support is off. Okay, fair fair point. Let's keep the life support online then. Um, but let's just begin to save some power here and there. Power distributor. Um, let's just put an A rate then. It doesn't... Shield super conduit. Frame shift drive that there thrusters put that oh it's actually we need some we need some power here like right? so thrusters just needs to be like really low power thrusters can we put D rated in there and then put dirty drive drag drives on this no not really those frame shift drive one one E frame shift drive just to save some power. Yeah, now we still have room to play with here. How much time are we surviving now? Yeah. This is minutes, by the way. We're getting close to 10 hours. How does that work with Biwis? Biwis wouldn't work because you only you don't recharge your shield while you're taking damage. So that's why that, that was what I was doing in the beginning, but that, that won't work because you're being shot at all the time. But actually with all these hit points here, I think we need to recalculate our resistances over here because I think they will change a bit. Um, oh, B rate the shield cell banks and put those in specialized bus shell and So we are slow. We're gonna see. If we can't push this up to ten hours. I don't know if that's doable. But one thing I want to do is I want. I think, like, if I calculate all these hit points together, I don't even know if the shield tester is gonna be able to to do numbers this high. But let's try it anyway. Um, total reinforcement. Those are the numbers that I'm looking for. Six, five, nine, seven. Plus two one six two plus two one six two two one six two plus one eight oh sorry one one eight four something that makes sense one one eight four it's another one uh six Seven six. Wow, this is a lot. Four four. Shield cell bank not found. Plus one one one. That gives us a total of. Uh, or is it here? Shield cell bank of seventeen thousand eight hundred and twenty six. It just maxes it out. 
See, now it goes with that. Even with all those hit points. Oh, look, it just maxes it out at 10,000. <laughs> it, it couldn't go higher than 10,000. So I think... Reinforced... Hmm. Let's just keep reinforced demo block, but just go with just two heavy duties and the rest was a thermal block reinforced thermal block and all those are thermal block this is reinforced thermal block and put those in here damn it we are close <laughs> Uh, okay, can we just play around with this for just a little bit and see if we can? So, five, six, nine. Can we get a little bit more survivability out of this thing? Just a little bit more. What if we instead went with a a thermal resistant um, force block here? Yeah, see, there we go. Just go for all the hit points here, because we don't know the true damage output of these. Yeah, 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 there we go. Now we're way over, we are at 876 minutes. 876 minutes divided by 60 minutes. Like that's, that's over 14 hours of continuous shooting by a stock eagle. for it to get through the, the shield. I could go to bed and wake up the next morning. And if that eagle was still firing continuously, it would still not have gotten through the shield. Anyway, uh, that's pretty stupid. Oh, actually calculates down here. That's pretty neat. So I don't have to sit and do it manually. Huh, well, nice. Okay, uh, what time is it? We have time for one more, I think. Uh, let me just see, there were some more requests here. Um, There was a lot of requests for, for PvP builds, but I'm very reluctant to do those because I have absolutely zero experience in PvP. So I have no idea like what I would do with it, like what weapons, what modifications are good. I, no idea. Um, there was a request for a pure combat cutter. Um, the fastest speed possible, period. No, I haven't done the pirate Cobra yet. But again, the problem with the with the combat of the PvP ships is again, I have no idea which, what is good. A combat sidewinder, Lordwinder, fifteen, dolphin mining ship. That I have a dolphin mining. If you go and look up the um, um, the sidewinder to. Uh, yeah, the Sidewinder to Fleet Carrier series, I think it's in episode 2. There I go over, a, or I actually built myself a Mining Dolphin. Um, and I've got, I'm sorry, I've got to pass on the combat on the PvP ships, because again, I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, Anaconda PvEs, NPC, Piracy... Uh, what else do we have? Fastest speed possible, I think is very well documented somewhere. We could probably Google that. Longest jump range build is going to be stripped down to that Anaconda. We could do that real quick just to show. I don't think that's going to be too difficult to do. Longest jump range ship is Anaconda. Strip everything out of it. You can, if you want to, you can fit in a, a field scoop here. But we don't want to do that because you could, but you don't have to. But strip everything out of it. And then take D-Rate this one. Whoops. And lightweighted stuff on my mouse. D-Rate that one and lightweighted. We don't need to boost. 1D power distributor. Let's keep that there. 6A frame shift drive. Whoops. With a increased range and with mass manager. Thrusters. How light can we go? 8. 
Uh, gonna go 5D thrusters. Don't think I have anything here that's gonna do anything positive to my mass. No. And then finally, we just need the power plant, which needs to be a 2 D power plant with a little bit of overcharged on it. Let's put overcharged five just to have enough. And then we need a FSD booster. Boom. Can we can we power this? Yes, we can just power this. Oh yeah, great one clean plus strip down. Yeah, okay. Of course we can save a little bit of the thrusters. Uh great one clean with strip down for mass. And there you go, 80 light years. We can actually save a little bit extra. Um, we can downgrade this to a smaller tank. So we only have eight. Um... Hold on, are we actually now capped on our jump range? 82 total is... Uh, let me see here. Did we cap ourselves here? Yes. So look at this. Here we actually get 83. On a full tank here, we get 83 tons. But if we go and we put a 4C in there. Oh, do we actually get... But we dump... Hold on. Just zoom out a little bit so I can see the numbers update live here. You can see here. I can sit here. And I can adjust how much fuel we have on board. Oh, doesn't that update? Oh, I hope it would. That would have been cool if it did. But the problem is if we upgrade downgrade this to a three. We are now capped on uh, only one jump it seems is that exactly eight tons it's consuming oh yeah here max fuel per jump eight tons okay so we are just completely consuming the tank so that means one jump is gonna completely empty our tank um so well yeah fuel scoop maybe Problem, of course, is then we need to sacrifice a little bit here. Oh, can we get away with it? We're just putting a monster on. No, then we need to sacrifice some mass here in order to actually get that fuel scoop running. But I guess what we could do is we could put the frame show the uh, the fuel scoop into the secondary group, and whenever we needed to fuel scoop, we would turn off our Guardian FSD booster. And then turn on the fuel scoop. <laughs> so you would you would go with 4D thrusters, sure. 4D thrusters. I thought it's right that. Optimal mass. Drive distributor. Oh, yeah, I can disable the cargo hatch, of course. Is that sufficient? Yeah, disabling cargo hatch is sufficient. Then we could have the fuel scoop in there. But I just want to see if I can get the thrusters, because we do need those working. Can I go 4D? Are you sure we can get those flying? Oh, uh, it's not going to be dirty, that's for sure. This is going to increase the mass. I don't want that. Clean. I don't think a 4D you can get those flying. At least I... What am I missing here? Ten, sixteen, ten, eight. Yes, I want optimal mass. Exactly. So I don't want to have my optimal mass 
yes, I want to increase my optimal mass. So I don't want dirty drives. I don't want reinforced. That's increasing that. Clean also. Okay, hold on. So what if I go optimal? What if I go that and then drive distributor? Oh, there we go. Yes. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Reinforce one drive distributor. Then you can actually make this jump. 84.04 light years. I think that's about as much jump range as you can cram out of a ship. And then multiply that by four. And you are at 336 light years from a neutron star boost. That's pretty fun. So if we put anything on here, strip down, I don't think 0.05 of a ton is going to do much. It's actually going to give us slightly more. I don't think there's a much more we can do here now. But it's not very useful in daily life. No, not at all. Point oh one of a light year. Yeah. And rest is what side we're using. We're using Coriolis as a shipbuilding thingy thingy thingy. And can we now strip down the power plant? Oh, have we do we have more room now? We already had a 2D. So if we go overcharged, strip down. Ah, look at that. Yes, as so Christopher says, it will be neutral star, then a fuel star, neutral star, fuel star. This is not effective. This is the <laughs> one missed jump in this ship and you're gone. And you 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 have to wait for a rat. If you make a jump into a system. Oh, but the problem is, the problem here is if you jump into a neutron star, right? You would have to find a system where there is a neutron star and a scoopable star before you can do the neutron jump because you can you remember we spent eight um we spent eight tons at a max jump range right so if you jump to a fuel system and then you have to jump into the neutron star system and in that system you then spend some fuel meaning you don't get your full jump range out of the neutron star because you do not have the fuel for it so therefore you would have to either have someone tag along with you with refueling limpets to keep you topped up on fuel or you would have to find a system that both have a neutron star um is there a fuel synthesis there is uh, the fsd injectors and they should be able to add a little i don't know if they how they stack actually with the uh, with jump range on neutron boosts but i think they don't i think they're not affected i'm i don't think they stack two ton fuel module Fuel until you have enough. Go to the Newton Star system right next to it. Yeah, if it's deep boost doesn't stack, no. Hmm. 
<laughs> but I think this is about as far as you're going to be able to go. We got up to 0.8 here. It's pretty close. But lowering my main fuel tank is not going to help me. You, what you're thinking about add is adding a fuel tank here, but that's also going to add mass, right? You see, that's going to cut into my... Uh, into my jump range. Why did that cut into my jump range? Oh, yeah, here we go. Of course, now you can see my latent here is... Uh, if we're going to remove that. My latent then went up, right? Is this a build for speedrun record to Colonia? No. Speedrun into Colonia, I wouldn't do this. I would, at the very least, I would upgrade the fuel tank to a C. Okay, there's a lot of questions about ships like speedrunning to Colonia and a usable long range ship. Um, is two times four tons better than one times eight tons? It's the same. It's exactly the same. The fuel tanks themselves doesn't have any mass. It's only the fuel inside. Wow, an hour and 38 minutes from the bubble to Colonia. That's pretty damn fast. Hmm. Oh, well. This was fun. I think I'm going to call it, though, for <laughs> for tonight. Oh, we just got a raid in here. Hello, Jack and, uh, and people. What was the fuel scoop? Was the fuel scoop lightweight? No, the fuel scoop is not engineered. The fuel scoop only has shield. Uh, shielded as the only engineering on it, so that's no way to really uh, to re engineer that anyway. Anyway, I'm gonna gonna call it for today. I think it was fun, and thanks for all the suggestions. Sorry to all you guys who I didn't get to do your ship builds, um, but you know maybe we're gonna do that in a future stream. Or you're always welcome, of course, to drop by Discord and uh, and have a chat about it over there. Um, let me just quickly switch over to this one. Okay, so before we end though, I just want to quickly remind you guys that of course I'm running the 50,000 subscriber um, celebration at the moment. And that means there is um, a lot of events going on. There's some special videos coming out on YouTube. And there is of course a giveaway running at the moment that I'm going to post here in just a second as soon as I find the link. If it's not already part of the link spam that... Uh, <laughs> that Don Laura is doing here. Let me just quickly go to my dashboard and find that. But again, there's some pretty cool prices up for uh, for grabs. I have a a 10 inch Fire HD tablet from Amazon that comes with a one year subscription to Game Glass. That thing is sponsored by Game Glass. I have 85,000 arcs for Elite Dangerous, so you can get your fleet carrier kitted out when that comes out, or well, your whole fleet basically. There's the giveaway link. Um, that's also up for grabs and there is an x52 pro hotas that's sitting right here next to me that i'm going to ship to a lucky winner somewhere in the world when the winner's being drawn next saturday no not, not next saturday saturday next week is when the winners are being drawn in a special live stream there need the conda link sorry i'm gonna post the conda link in a second here let me just find that but again, there are that that's going on um bop, 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 bop. there you go dong laura thank you posted um yes so those giveaways are happening and there's also of course the limited time um merchandise that's also running here doing the events that i'm just going to show you guys really really quickly here before we end if i can find my own merch store there it is get you guys back on, on the camera so here you can see it with this nice cool um Cool design. I really like this design. Really nice. Uh, really like how that came out. 
you go check it out. This is only available until all the celebration events are over. Then I will take it down again and it will not be available again. There's also mocks and hoodies and, and all kinds of, uh, of other good stuff. But yeah, thanks all for watching. Hope you liked it. If you did, go down, give a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. If you're watching over Twitch, go Twitch, la la. Go down and hit the follow button. I hope I'll see you guys on Discord after the stream. And also next time, I'll see you guys in space.